One of the worst feelings in the world is buyer's remorse, and the larger the purchase, the worse the feeling. We've all been there. So just imagine how it must feel to be a general manager in an MLB front office after spending hundreds of millions of dollars over multiple years on one player who ends up bringing the team almost zero or sometimes even negative value. The owners might feel even worse since they're the ones who provided all that money. But it's the reality in pro sports. If you want the player, you got to overpay and offer contracts that extend well beyond the projected prime of a player. And this means sometimes contracts as long as 10 years or more, guaranteeing players get paid handsomely well into their late 30s and sometimes even their 40s. Today, we'll talk about 10 of the worst MLB contracts ever handed out and find out exactly what went wrong with these deals. I'll stick to deals at least five years long and with one exception, I'm gonna avoid current contracts. But first, a few dishonorable mentions. Barry Zito, San Francisco Giants, eight years, 126 million. Zito was the best available free agent arm entering 2007. And the Giants signed the former Cy Young Award winner to a massive deal. I remember attending his second start of the season against the Dodgers and Zito gave up eight runs. He finished the year with a 4.53 ERA and then led the league in losses in 2008 with a 5.15 ERA. He had a losing record through the first five years of the contract, but he avoids the main list because of a nice 2012 season in which he pitched well in the playoffs and helped the Giants win a World Series. Albert Pujols, LA Angels, 10 years, 240 million. This one just misses the main list because Pujols did provide some value for the Angels. He made an all-star team and he crushed 222 home runs in an Angels uniform, fourth all time. But he was a shadow of the player they thought they were signing. Pujols was a three-time MVP who consistently hit well over 300 and was simply the best hitter in the game when LA gave him a 10-year deal in 2012. He immediately declined and became a slow 250 or so hitter with some good power for most of his Angels career. A good player, but not one worth $240 million. David Wright, New York Mets, eight years, $113 million. I'm gonna put this one as a mention just because injuries were the sole reason for his massive decline, but it caused his eight-year $113 million deal to become a complete disaster. He had made six All-Star teams in seven years and just finished six for the MVP after hitting 306 with 21 home runs when he signed the deal in 2013. Wright's first year of the contract went well, although he had some hamstring issues and played in just 112 games. Then in 2014, he hit just eight home runs all year long with a 269 average. 2015, he was diagnosed with spinal stenosis and played in just 38 games. And in 16, while still struggling to stay on the field due to spinal stenosis, he suffered a herniated disc. Wright tried to rehab, but setbacks kept happening and he could never make a full-fledged comeback. Although in 2018, he was activated for the last homestand of the season and made three final plate appearances with the Mets. Ryan Howard, Philadelphia Phillies, five years, 125 million. During the late 2000s, one of the best hitters in the game had to be Ryan Howard of the Phillies, who won a Rookie of the Year in 2005 and an MVP in 2006 after crushing 58 homers with a 313 average. From 2006 to 2009, he averaged around 50 home runs per season. The Phillies thought they had a future Hall of Famer and wanted to make sure that they lock him up so that he could spend most of, if not all, his career in Philadelphia. That's about the only goal that was achieved with the five-year, $125 million extension that they gave Howard in 2010. The new contract kicked in in 2012, and that's about when the decline began. During an injury-riddled season, he hit just 219 with 14 home runs. 2013, Howard suffered a torn left meniscus and played in just 80 games. He finally played in a full year in 2014, but hit just 223 and led the league with 190 strikeouts. His numbers kept declining, and in 2016, he hit 196 during the final year of the extension, and it was his last MLB season, though he did play in the minor leagues with the Rockies and Braves organization in 2017. At least he finished out his contract. Let's get into the top 10. Number 10, Anthony Rendon, Los Angeles Angels, seven years, 245 million. I was going to avoid putting current contracts on the list, but I had to make an exception for Anthony Rendon, but I'll put him at number 10 since he still has some time to get it together, but I wouldn't bet on it. 
For his first seven years, Anthony Rendon established himself as one of the best overall players in Major League Baseball. The third baseman played stellar defense, won multiple silver sluggers, finished as high as third for the MVP, and helped the Nationals win it all in 2019 after hitting 319 with 34 home runs and a league-leading 126 RBIs and 44 doubles. He was one of the top free agents entering 2020, the Los Angeles Angels signed him to a seven-year, $245 million deal. That seemed to make sense at the time, but what they didn't know was that Anthony Rendon doesn't really like baseball, which makes it kind of tough to play through nagging injuries when players hit their 30s. Incredibly, Rendon, after five years of this contract, has still not played in 60 games in a season for the Angels. In 2020, it took 29 plate appearances for him to get his first hit. 21, he hit just 240 with six home runs, missing most of the year with various injuries. In 2022, he was hurt almost all year again and suspended for his part in a brawl. He hit just 229 with five home runs and the spiral continued in 23 after he got into an altercation with a fan and was suspended four games. For the year, he hit 236 with two home runs. In 2024, he was on the injured list again over and over and hit a career low 218. His contract has been an absolute disaster and he admitted this year baseball's never been a top priority for him and he wants them to shorten the season. Uh, we got to shorten the season, man. It's too many dang games. 162 games in 185, three days, whatever it is. Man, no. <laughs> we got to shorten this bad boy up. Let's go. <laughs> but it's already shortened for him. He's only played in 37% of the Angels games since signing that seven-year deal. Number nine, Jordan Zimmerman. Detroit Tigers, five years, 110 million. One of the premier free agent pitchers entering the 2016 season had to be Jordan Zimmerman, who had recently made two All-Star games with Washington and led the league with 19 wins in 2013. In 2015, his ERA was up a little bit at 3.66, but he was still solid and had just finished his fourth straight year with at least 32 starts. He had proven to be healthy and effective, so the Tigers decided to give him a five-year deal worth $110 million. He never made 30 starts in a season for Detroit. He had a hot start going 5-0, but then things fell apart, and he finished his first year in Detroit 9-7 with a 4.87 ERA. 2017 was even worse, and Zimmerman went 8-13 with an ERA over 6, leading the league in earned runs. By 2019, he could hardly even win a game. Literally, he went 1-13 with a 6.91 ERA. He pitched in just three games in the last year of his contract in 2020 and had a 7.94 ERA. During his five-year stint with the Tigers, Zimmerman had a war in the negatives. Number eight, B.J. Upton. Atlanta Braves, five years, 72.5 million. Upton was a former Tampa Bay Devil Rays second overall pick who could fly on the base paths, make sparkling plays in the outfield, and absolutely crush a baseball. In 2012, his last year with Tampa Bay, he smashed a career-high 28 bombs, his third season hitting north of 20 home runs. He was one of the hottest free agents available, and the Braves signed him to the biggest deal in franchise history. His stats immediately plummeted, and he looked like a completely different player. After averaging 39 steals a season for five years, he stole just 12 bases and hit a mere nine home runs with an abysmal 184 batting average. He had a negative 1.7 war that season and did not get much better from there. In 2014, he hit 208 with a war again in the negatives. To get rid of him, the Braves had to package him up in a deal with their elite closer, Craig Kimbrell, and ship him off to San Diego for prospects. He played slightly better there for two part-time seasons before being traded to the Blue Jays, where he hit 196 and was released before the final season of his contract. He signed minor league deals with the Giants and Indians later, but never made it back to the big leagues. Number seven, Madison Bumgarner. Arizona Diamondbacks, five years, 85 million. By the time Mad Bum reached free agency in 2019, he was a four-time All-Star and postseason legend who had finished in the top five for the Cy Young four times he was basically unhittable in the postseason and had a .25 ERA in five World Series starts. But he was entering into his 30s and had recently experienced a couple of injuries, one from a dirt bike accident. His velocity was down a bit and in 2019, he had just gone 9-9 with a 3.9 ERA but still struck out 8.8 batters per nine. 
The Giants offered him four years and 70 million, but the D-backs topped that offer, and things didn't go well in Arizona to start the deal, as Mad Bum struggled, then suffered a back strain. In nine starts, he went one and four with a 6.4 ADRA, and he was terrible again in 2021, apart from one five-game stretch in which he pitched well and even threw his seven-inning no-hitter. But for the season, he went seven and 12 with a 4.67 ERA. In 2022, he lost 15 games and had the worst strikeout ratio in his career. He was released four starts into 2023, in which he went 0-3 with an ERA over 10. D-backs have to continue to pay Bumgarner through the 2024 season. He provided a negative war for his services during the contract. Number six, Prince Fielder, Detroit Tigers, nine years, 214 million. After seven years in Milwaukee, Prince Fielder was clearly one of the league's most dominant and healthy hitters. He never missed a game and absolutely crushed the baseball. In 2011, he hit 299 with 38 bombs, finishing third for the MVP. The Tigers gave Fielder a massive nine-year deal worth $214 million, but he wore a Tigers uniform for just two seasons. He did play well in the regular season, hitting 313 with 30 bombs, but struggled in the postseason and hit just 071 in the 2012 World Series, which the Tigers lost to San Francisco. In 2013, he hit just 182 in the ALCS, then pissed off every Tigers fan by saying, it's not really tough, man. It's over. I got kids I got to take care of. I got things I got to take care of. It's over. It's not tough. It's a sentiment he had expressed before, even after the 2012 World Series loss. Caught up with Prince Fielder, who let Brad know just how long the bitter defeat in the World Series stuck with him. It stayed about, you know, a couple hours, at three, four or five hours. But, you know, then I got to go home. I got to be a dad, you know. You know, you know, we lost. We had a good year. You got to move on and get ready for next year. Although, yes, it's a good thing to go home and take care of your kids, fans were not trying to hear about how little Fielder cared about losing, especially after a poor postseason performance with the bat. So after some outrage in Detroit, he was traded to the Rangers, but he played in just 42 games in 2014 before season-ending neck surgery. He recovered enough to hit 305 with 23 bombs in 2015, but after hitting just 212 in 2016, he had to step away from baseball after a second neck surgery. His doctors would not clear him to play. He did not officially retire so that the Rangers would still have to pay him through the 2020 season. So ultimately, it was the Rangers, not the Tigers, who really paid the price for this bad contract. Number five, Alex Rodriguez, New York Yankees, 10 years, $275 million. A-Rod signed not just one, but two 10-year contracts during his career. The first was with the Rangers in 2001, and he played well for Texas, but the team wasn't that great, and they traded him after just three seasons. He went on to win three MVPs for the Yankees, so that first contract wasn't so bad, but the second was in many ways a complete disaster, although it has to be said that he did help the Yankees win a World Series in 2009, which is why this isn't ranked higher. As for the bad, the controversies during this 10-year deal began before he even signed the contract, when A-Rod opted out of the original 10-year deal in 2007 before even speaking with the front office, becoming an unrestricted free agent. And he and his agent, Scott Boris, announced it during the eighth inning of what would be the deciding World Series game between the Red Sox and Rockies, creating controversy they seem to want to take the attention away from the field and focus it on them. Yankees and A-Rod eventually settled on a 10-year deal that would last through A-Rod's age 42 season. Just a year into the contract, he was first exposed for using PEDs during the 2003 season with Texas. And he admitted to using performance-enhancing drugs from 2001 to 2003. But in 2013, he was linked to the biogenesis scandal and busted for PEDs again. After denying it and appealing it, he was suspended for the entire 2014 season and eventually admitted guilt. While he wasn't suspended during this new contract, A-Rod struggled with injuries and played in less than 100 games three times. He retired in 2016 before the contract was even over. Rodriguez did give the Yankees some value, but based on the suspensions, controversies, and injuries, I'd say it ended up as a horrible deal in the end. Number four, Josh Hamilton. Los Angeles Angels, five years, $125 million. After being picked first overall by the Tampa Bay Devil Rays in 1999, Josh Hamilton nearly threw away his entire career due to an addiction to drugs and alcohol. He missed three entire minor league seasons and was considered the biggest draft bust in MLB history when he got his life together and got a second chance with the Reds in 2007. 
He hit 292 with 19 home runs, displaying an incredible ability to hit a baseball, the same one that got him drafted first overall. After a trade to the Rangers, he became an absolute superstar and won the MVP in 2010 with an insane season in which he hit 359 with 32 bombs and an OPS of 1,044. Hamilton made five straight All-Star teams and crushed 43 bombs in 2012, his last year before entering free agency. Not surprisingly, teams threw money at him, and Hamilton signed with the Angels, who offered a massive five-year deal worth $125 million. There was some risk, especially given Hamilton's past, but he seemed to have completely changed his life. He was also 32, however, and there was a chance of some decline in his performance. The Angels lost both of those gambles. He declined immediately and hit just 250 with 21 homers his first year. Then the injury bug hit, and he played in just 89 games in 2014. ALDS, he went 0 for 13. Then before the 2015 season, while rehabbing a shoulder injury, he suffered a drug and alcohol related relapse. The Angels were done with Hamilton and traded him back to the Rangers, but they were still on the hook for most of his contract. He played in just 50 more games for the Rangers in 2015, but suffered injury issues for the rest of his career until finally retiring after a failed comeback attempt in 2017. Number three, Pablo Sandoval. Boston Red Sox, five years, 95 million. After the Giants won the World Series in 2014, fan favorite Pablo Sandoval, AKA Panda, became an attractive free agent due to his elite hand-eye coordination at the plate and reliable glove at third base. He had made two all-star teams in 2011 and 2012, but also had a history of being out of shape and wasn't exactly a top-tier superstar. The Red Sox gave him huge money anyway with a five-year deal worth nearly $100 million in guaranteed money. It turned out to be an unmitigated disaster and Pablo showed up to spring training out of shape and had career lows in several offensive categories, including batting average, which was just 245. He had a negative war and things only got worse from there. In 2016, he was overweight again and ended up missing the entire season except for six hitless at-bats. 2017, he was hitting just 212 when Boston pulled the plug. He was designated for assignment, removed from the 40-man roster, then released after passing through waivers. They still had to pay him through 2019 and did so even after he returned to San Francisco, where he began to play better. The Red Sox ended up paying Pablo about $48 million to not play for them. It was one of the most regrettable and disastrous contracts in MLB history. Number two, Jacoby Ellsbury, New York Yankees, seven years, 153 million. No list of bad MLB contracts would be complete without the seven-year Jacoby Ellsbury disaster. Ellsbury was a speedy and exciting player for the Red Sox from 2007 to 2013. He led the league in steals three times, won a gold glove, and could also handle the bat, especially in 2011, when he crushed 32 homers with a 321 average, finishing second for the MVP. During the 2013 to 2014 offseason, the Yankees pinned Ellsbury to a massive seven-year deal north of $150 million. He almost immediately turned into a slightly above average center fielder with decent speed. In 2014, he hit 271 with 16 homers, and that would be his best year in New York. In 2015, he hit just 257 with seven home runs and 21 steals. After two more mediocre seasons, it was announced he would miss all of 2018 with hip injuries and a torn labrum. He never played professional baseball again. The Yankees released him in November of 2019 and still owed Ellsbury $21 million along with a $5 million buyout for 2021. But they tried to not pay him, claiming he received an unauthorized medical. So the MLB Players Association filed a grievance, the two sides settled out of court, and the Yankees still had to pay Ellsbury at least a large portion of what was owed on his disastrous contract. Number one, Chris Davis, Baltimore Orioles, seven years, 161 million. It had to be the most epic performance meltdown ever for a player who just signed a massive contract extension. And in my opinion, it's the worst contract in MLB history. From 2012 to 2015, Chris Davis was one of the Orioles' most productive bats, and he had just smashed a league-leading 47 home runs with a 923 OPS. He was an all-star, silver slugger, and finished as high as third for the MVP. He was also not even 30 yet, so the Orioles did the logical thing and secured his services for the foreseeable future, 
with a seven-year extension. In 2016, he hit just 221, and that was just the beginning of the collapse. In 2017, Davis hit 215, and in 2018, during the disastrous Baltimore Orioles 115 loss season, Davis hit 168 with a slugging percentage under 300. Even Dwayne Kuyper, who hit one career home run, slugged 316. He also started his consecutive hitless at bat streak, and in 2019 he made history, completing 54 consecutive at bats without a hit, an MLB record for a non pitcher. In 2020, he hit 115, but missed most of the season with a knee injury. He missed all of 2021 after hip surgery and then finally hung up his cleats for good. But much of his contract was deferred, and the Orioles will still be paying Chris Davis through 2037. And that's going to do it for today's list of 10 of the worst MLB contracts in MLB history. But let me know who I missed because I know there's been a ton more that I considered. The Vernon Wells contract was awful. The Cubs' Jason Hayward eight-year deal didn't quite turn out as they hoped. And there's been several others. But this is just my top 10. Put yours in that comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think of some of these horrible contracts. And there's several that are still going on that will probably make this list at some point in the future. But I'm going to give it some more time. The only one I had to put was that horrible Anthony Rendon contract, which I don't see getting much better since the man hates baseball. You guys have a great day. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe. We'll talk to you in the next video.